Hello everyone, this is Boricua Binks and welcome back to Let's Play The Confines of the Crown where we are continuing on after last episode. Um, we helped Prince Callum uh, after he forced us into a blood oath and now we are going to be joining him and Oscar into a trip to the forest to hopefully go rescue the princess. Alright, so let's continue. He blows out a breath. I suppose it will have to do. You may accompany me, but without your sword. I will decide if you should have one. Just remember who's in command here. Whatever you see or hear, you do what I tell you. I understand. Which isn't, which isn't quite the same as a promise to obey. Callum looks at me. I expect you to keep an eye on him. I always do. Because if he betrays me, he will pay. The blunt reminder that Callum is not our new friend leaves the room silent for a moment. Should I fetch a purse, then? Not funny. She doesn't like my jokes. She doesn't like my poetry, either. Would you like to hear some? <laughs> oh, he tried to build up the OT3. Yay! <laughs> Callum's like, maybe some other time. <laughs> no. <laughs> Will you be quiet? See? We're getting along fine. <laughs> I can't help smiling along with him. Even under such tension, nothing damps his spirit for long. But my role is to be the focused and responsible one, and I'd better get back to playing it. So, you have the ransom and you have your backup. Where do we find this secret exit? And how certain are you that it is still secret and still unguarded? What if someone's been using it? The entrance is hidden and, on and known only to the royal family. The door beyond it is kept locked. And if you get through that, you end up somewhere that most people would not want to go. Okay, I saw some cobwebs. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. The underground tunnels that Callum led us to are choked with rubble and spiderwebs. It is visibly obvious that no one has been this way in a long time. The entrance was the worst, the stones overhead cracked and crumbling, and threatening to collapse at any moment. As we've moved along, the state of repair has increased. State of repair? Um, I think sh they meant to say something else. The, the state of disrepair or... I don't know. It just sounded weird to me. But so has the unpleasant... Oh, no. Unless they're saying it looks better. Okay. But so has the unpleasant atmosphere. The air down here is fetid. And insects are constantly flapping at the edges of our torchlight. Ugh, bugs. No, thank you. What is this place? Hundreds of years ago, when customs were different, these were the catacombs. The bodies of those who died in service were laid here to rot, so that even in death their spirits would remain beneath their masters. Okay, that sounds kind of messed up, the way you said it. That's awful. It is the way things were. When times changed... Parts of these tunnels were reworked into a sewage system that feeds into the river. That explains the bugs and the smell. Watch yourself, little prince. Where there are insects, there are spiders, and some of them bite. As we ease along a narrow stone ledge, Callum's shoulder comes into contact with a bit of loose rubble in a wall niche and knocks it out of place. A pale-bellied snake dislodged from its slumber, falls onto his arm and begins to writhe. Uh-oh. Ugh. Calmly, Oscar reaches over and scoops the snake off Callum and onto the floor where it slithers away. Hey, you were the one giving him a hard time about spiders and you got freaked out by a snake. <laughs> you were saying? Oscar. Don't worry, those aren't poisonous. Yeah, just to show my OT3 developing well. 
<laughs> he's like, you thought you were the top, but I'm the top. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, love it. I think. Uh, is it actually dangerous down here? It isn't safe, but I wouldn't have brought you if I expected it to be fatal. Did you explore here as a child? No. Once. <laughs> There's nothing to see but rocks and bones and filth. There wasn't any point. No hidden treasure. Who would leave anything precious among the bodies of dead peasants? Their families. Their families were peasant families. They would have nothing of value. Unless they'd stolen it from their masters, and then they'd keep it for themselves. Thieves are not generous. You're such a cynic. <sighs> Leave me alone. Stop trying to bond with me. <laughs> there once was a sourpuss from Gwellinor, who postured and puffed till he was good and sore. Do you ever stop talking? Hey, he mentioned poetry. When I'm asleep... Once we leave these tunnels, it is imperative that we remain silent. There may be guards on watch. If you can't handle that, turn back now, or you'll have us all shot. Oscar's only joking with you. He wouldn't put us in danger. Ah, uh, Doubt. In the distance, I hear a kind of rustling. What was that? Bats. We're getting close now. Watch your step. Pretty. I like to look at the backgrounds. Okay. As predicted, the dank tunnels eventually give way to a natural brook, gurgling quietly in the night. Behind us looms the deceptively calm shadow of the palace, too far away for us to see the patterns of the guards, or for them to see us. This is unknown territory, far from the roads that Oscar and I traveled. Not even a path can be seen amongst the trees and grass. We must rely upon Callum to be our guide. He motions us closer and speaks in a low tone. Keep an eye out for centipedes. The bite won't kill you, but your screams would draw notice. Ugh, that sounds horrible. With no further explanation, he moves out, leaving us to follow. Neither Oscar nor I is an expert in woodscraft, but neither are we strangers to the outdoors. Oscar, in particular, always loved climbing trees or games of cash, 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 okay, in the forest. Thus, I know how to place my feet to avoid making too much noise, and which bits of brush are most likely to hide creatures who will retaliate for being disturbed. Daring robberies, ancient tunnels, and now sneaking away in the dark to save a lost princess. It's very close to being an entertaining adventure. Callum leads us along the water's edge in silence for some time, and eventually stops by a grassy bank. We'll set up camp here. Camp? What about the rendezvous? It's tomorrow. We're spending the night out here? Was that not obvious? If it had been obvious earlier, we could have brought supplies. Blankets, food from the kitchen. Dinner is over. How many meals a day do they eat in Osendawir? In Osendawir, we eat a good breakfast before a hard day's work. Or a fight. It's alright. Once the sun's up, we can hunt for plants. And with the stream right here, we could even fish. With no hook, line, or net? Right. Well, we can still find food. It'll be fun. This is not fun. Then what is it? If you told us more about what you were planning, we'd be better able to help you. You know enough. You know, she promised not to ask questions, but I didn't. I'm not interested in your nattering. All I want to do is help Cassidy. You understand that, don't you? I liked her, and I let her down. I couldn't protect her. I owe her the best that I can give. And to do my best, I need to know what you know. You don't need anything. Please. 
Not even Callum can hold out against those eyes forever. I certainly couldn't. Fine. Ask your questions, but I don't promise to answer. Do you know who it is that has Cassidy? No, but it doesn't matter. The political... This isn't politics. This is a crime about coin. How do you know that? You don't need to know. <sighs> what are you expecting to happen tomorrow? We find the location ahead of time, and the two of you put yourselves out of sight and stay there. They expect me alone. If we are betrayed, if Cass is in danger, you are my reserves. If everything goes by plan, then when Cass is safe, when they think they're won, they think they've won, sorry, you take them. So you are double-crossing them. You object? They are criminals. They don't deserve to get away with it. No, I agree. But there's only three of us. There's a limit to how much we can do. Plate pickers like these have no loyalty. I don't expect more than one or two at the most. If there's a full company, then don't waste your strength. If they are few, then show no mercy. Understood. Good. He rolls his head around his shoulders, stretching out the tension. You should get some sleep. We'll need to be up at dawn to find our position. Especially if you expect to forage. I... I'd better find some leaves. For a mattress. The two young men walk off in different directions, leaving me alone. Ah, typical. Which one do you follow to have a deep and meaningful discussion? <laughs> as curious as I am about Callum, you know I'm gonna stick with my boy Oscar. So far, this doesn't seem to be turning out too badly. If Callum's telling the truth, then tomorrow we should be able to save Cassidy and bring her safely home. The palace will be in a panic from a night's searching, but with the prince and princess beside us, we'll be greeted as heroes. If. Oh, talk to, talk to Callum is locked because of the choices we've been making. So, I'm not even going to save here because uh, this is not a real choice. Because we've already locked ourselves into Oscar, so. I find Oscar a little ways along, seated by the stream. Despite what he said earlier, he doesn't seem to be assembling a bed, just staring into the rippling surface of the water. Hi. Hi. Oh, they look so cute! Aww. I love the art. It's so pretty. They're really cute. Mindful of the damp, I take my time choosing a seat beside him. You did well with Callum. You put him at ease. You got him to open up to you, at least a little. Without your help, I wouldn't have any information at all. I do listen to you, you know, in all those lessons. Just because I don't want to spend my life manipulating people doesn't mean I can't do it. I never said you couldn't do it. No, but you were surprised, weren't you? You think I'm a child, and it's more fun sometimes acting like one. I don't think you're a child. No? Then what is it? What is it? His eyes fall upon the amber stone which hangs around my neck. Why do you always turn me away? You said you weren't going to do this. That was then. That was before I had to listen to someone trying to kill you while I was helpless. He... I know he wasn't. That doesn't change how it felt to me then. How it felt to watch him force you into his hands, to stay behind while they took you away, to see you draped over him. It was nothing. Shh. I'm telling you how I felt. I thought I could be a grown-up and let you go without a fight. But I was wrong. We need to talk. My heart is hammering in my chest. We can't do this. Mmm. Okay, now we can save. I'm going to say this is the ninth real choice that we have. Oh, friend zone him. Or leave the door open. So we're going to leave the door open. What about Cassidy? 
I... What about Cassidy? What about her? Aren't you in love with her? He just met her! <laughs> what? I barely know her! But you do like her. You're a good match for each other. She's young and light-hearted, just like you. She's a princess, an heir, and she likes you and you're riding to her rescue. It's a classic romance. Saving someone who's been kidnapped doesn't mean I'm in love with her. I saw you together. I saw how you two looked at each other. Now you'll be her hero and you'll probably be married and that's good. That's great because you're jealous. What? You are actually jealous. <laughs> Cute. Don't be ridiculous. I want you to marry Cassidy. It's the best thing for everyone. He leans in close to me, grinning like a cat who's had the cream. So, you were watching me dance with Cassidy, and you weren't at all thinking that you might like to dance with me. We shouldn't be doing this. You weren't thinking that you might like to go for a walk with me somewhere nice, like a river at night. We definitely shouldn't be doing this. I have to pull away. I have to. Aha! It happened. <laughs> Don't deny your heart. They're cute. I, I can't think. This shouldn't happen. What do I do? I've never... I don't know how. Does he? I've never known how warm it would feel to... No! I scramble backwards, away from Oscar, breaking contact. We cannot do this. Maddie. No, you are my responsibility. I work for your parents. I take care of you. I cannot do this. And you are a prince. You're a leader. You've had the best tutors, the best of everything. You want to throw away everything your parents have given you to marry me? Do you know what would happen to us? We'd starve, that's what. No home, no money, no trade. We'd have nothing. We could talk to my parents. Your parents pay me to make you desirable to other women, not to corrupt you. I've worked so hard. I've done everything right. I'm not going to let you ruin your life. This didn't happen. Marry Cassidy and be happy. I turn and walk away, ignoring anything he tries to say behind me. I have to go. I can't let him see my face. He must not see me cry. I thought I had everything under control. I thought I could let him go. I thought if I told myself I didn't love him enough times, I could make it true. It's not going to work. There's no way out. I do have feelings for Oscar, but we can never, ever be together. Aw, chapter three, the revelation. Ooh, how many chapters are in this game? Because I feel like it'd be cool if it was short enough that, you know, we go rescue her, end of the story. But maybe they're going to throw some twists in there and make it much longer. So, hmm, we'll see. The hours of night are spent sleeping fitfully among the sticks and stones. Years have passed since I last attempted to camp under the open stars. I'm not accustomed to it. Every noise startles me to alertness, the hum of insects, the croak of frogs, the restless slumber of my companions, the too early cries of birds. Each time I must still my heart and slip back into the darkness. I do need my sleep. When the sky begins to lighten, we arise. Oscar scavenging turns up birds' eggs and wild asparagus. Foods that can be cooked quickly, even without utensils. Neither Oscar nor I make any reference to our conversation the night before. This morning we are strictly business. Oh, cool, it looks different in the daytime. Once bellies have been filled and bladders discreetly lightened, a task considerably easier for my companions than myself. Tell me about it, girl. It's always harder for us females. We are ready to seek the rendezvous point. Okay. 
Callum leads us to a country road, his particular destination marked by a crudely carved milestone half buried in the verge. This is the place. Get yourselves out of sight. We could have hours yet to wait. Find a spot where you can be hidden and silent for as long as necessary. His gaze falls on Oscar. If you can't do that, then get back to the river and stay there where you won't make a mess of things. I can do it. You had better be right. Remember, the most important thing is that Cass is safe. Don't take any action that could endanger that. But once the way is clear, don't let those bastards get away. We understand. Oscar and I secret ourselves into the brush. Hiding among such thick cover is simple enough. Making a nest for yourself where the smallest movement will not rustle loudly and give you away is more complicated. Even the most patient soul must shift position occasionally. It's not good for the body to do otherwise. Callum's role in this is easier. He takes up a visible position along the road, pulls out a knife and a bit of wood, and begins whittling at it. For myself, there's nothing to do but wait and think. Oscar, why did you have to kiss me? It doesn't make this any easier. He's always been so sweet and easygoing and innocent. I never thought he'd try to push further. It must have been the stress of yesterday. Everything will have to be different now. We must not touch each other anymore. Not even for comfort. We have to be sure that nothing like that ever happens again. It will be easier once Cassidy is safe. I'm sure she and Oscar could be happy together. After a long and uncomfortable wait, I hear the sound of footsteps on the road. Callum hears it too, but he holds his position and waits for the newcomer to approach him. Waits, that is, for the newcomer to come close enough that Oscar and I may see without giving ourselves away. Who is it? Almost close enough, a single person in palace uniform. Oh? Dolores? Oh. The page stops at a small distance from Callum. Close enough to talk, far enough that he can't make a grab for her. She folds her arms insolently and waits. Do you have a message for me? I guess that's we, oui, like French. I forgot what voice I gave her. Dang nabbit. <clears throat> Wait, I uh, maybe do. Here's the message. Give me the gold. Dolores is working with the kidnappers. How can that be? She helped me, didn't she? The deal was a trade. Gold for the princess. No princess, no gold. Do you think I'm stupid, Lord Fancy Boy? Once you've got your princess back, what guarantee have I got you won't go after me? since that was exactly the plan she has a point. You want her back? You play by my rules. And if I gave you the gold, what guarantee do I have that Cassidy is unharmed, or that you even have her? I'll take you to her. You throw me the gold, I'll guide you to where I left her, one step at a time. And keep your distance, you try to rough me up, I'll lead you in circles till she starves. Half now, half when I see the princess. Don't worry, fancy boy. I don't want her on my hands. I had enough of looking after lords and ladies I have. Half now, no more. Fine, throw it over. A sack of a sack of coins lands with a heavy clattering at her feet. She opens it to check the contents, then, apparently satisfied, smiles. Go on with you then, that way. Keep moving, and I'll tell you when to turn. Together, they move into the woods. This is not good. The only thing to do now is to try to follow them without making too much noise, and hope we can still be ready to spring on Dolores once she's delivered on her promise. I look around for Oscar to be sure he understands what must be done, and find him making wild-eyed faces at me. There's no time, and we can't risk being overheard. We must rely on gesture. He points at his foot, waves his hands in a negative fashion, shrugs, and in indicates that I should go on without him? Did something happen? I'm not sure what the problem is. 
Maybe his foot fell asleep? Yeah. Maybe he's caught somehow, or maybe he neglected to shift position earlier, and now his feet are too numb to stand and move quietly. Whatever the cause, he is out of commission. I will have to tail Dolores on my own. Huh. Weird. Okay. Maybe that will help us in the end, though. I creak through the brush, trying to keep both pale heads in sight while avoiding dry twigs and other giveaways. Callum is in the lead, moving slowly at Dolores' direction and pausing frequently to look back at her. She, in turn, always waits for him to move before she'll take a step to follow him, never allowing that distance between them to close. Her caution means that, if not for my presence, she would have a fair chance at escape if she chose to run for it. It would depend on how quickly Callum could react. Would that be enough for her? She seems a cunning sort. And I don't say that solely, f solely because she misled me earlier. Oh no. Fleeing from Callum would be even easier if he were temporarily distracted or injured. Could she be leading him into a trap? Before I can spin worse imaginings, she stops. May as well come out, Miss Nosy. Oh. What? I know you're out there, a cinderweir girl. I saw you with himself last night playing Broken Bird. Tricky. Now I can wait here all day, but your delicate lady is all alone and helpless like. So get over here. I hesitate, trying to decide whether she's certain of my presence or merely suspecting it. Come out, Faloy. So much for that, then. I raise my hands and move noisily into view. Planning to turn on me, weren't you? A caution. You would have done the same. Or maybe did. I used to know. I don't think she could have managed to hide her own allies in the same thicket we were hiding in earlier. But maybe that's why I'm saying maybe it's good that he stayed behind so that... In case something like this happens and she has other people emerge later, he can help us out. But now that she is calling the shots, she might indeed be leading us to them. Get over there, next to him. Since Callum apparently wants me to play along, I obey her instructions and walk past her to stand beside him. The trader's servant then produces a silk scarf which she hurls, which she hurls in our direction. Tie your sails together. Is this some sort of joke? You're the one playing Jester's tricks, fancy boy. Should have come alone. I've always wondered why you weren't dismissed from service. You make a terrible page. Well then, good that's, that is settled. Now do as I say. Arm or leg, I don't care. Callum picks up a scarf and extends his left hand to me. I'm not quite sure what he has in mind, but I place my right hand in his. He winds the scarf over and around and through our shared clasp, creating something that looks like a knot, but isn't actually. We are not tied, only tangled, and it will not take long to free ourselves again. Dolores can't tell quite what he's done unless she comes closer to examine it. Of course, and she seems disinclined to take such a step. Despite his brief show of resistance, Callum seems quite calm about the setbacks the rogue page has put in our path. Of course, he still thinks we have Oscar in reserve, and I cannot tell him that my prince has been left behind. Hopefully he'll catch up? I don't know. That's what I'm assuming. We resume our course through the woods, step by step. For good or for ill, Dolores' voice is our guide. And then at last we see it, a splash of pink across the forest floor. Cass! Instinctively, he starts to move towards his fallen sister, and his motion tugs at our joined hands. That moment of distraction is what Dolores has apparently been waiting for. Abandoning us and the remaining half of her ransom gold, she turns to flee. Go! We rush after her as best as we can. It is not so easy as one might think to run in a forest, particularly while well entangled with another. We could, of course, pause for a moment and remove the silk wrapping, but that would require that we pause. Instead, Callum crushes my fingers in his grip as we attempt at a synchronized pursuit. 
She is one and we are two. And in this terrain, that gives her an advantage. She's going to get away. We're losing. And then, quite unexpectedly, I hear a shout. It's Oscar! Somehow or other, he must have gotten himself loose from his predicament and tried to catch up with us, only to find himself directly in Dolores' escape path. He's not bigger or faster than she is, but he is there, and she can't swerve away in time. In one desperate leap, he tackles her to the ground. But that doesn't bring an end to it. But it does bring an end to this episode. <laughs> Perfect uh, cliffhanger to leave it here. So, uh, Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this. And until next time, have a nice day.